how does that work? And the answer is real simple. If God makes a decree that there is something necessary for you to do, and he chooses you before the foundation of the world, you will never ever live and not go through what he decreed because the same God that chose you before the foundation of the world will keep you alive to get through anything he asks you to do. I want to talk to some people tonight that's been confused for a long time. God makes a requirement and sets a process the devil can't kill you until God's process that he set for you is fulfilled so you can bring the hypothetical question up and I got a reality answer and that is that there is nobody living that will ever die that God has chosen before the foundation of the world that will not go through his process. It ain't gonna happen. There is no devil that can kill you before God fulfills his requirement in your life. So don't tell me nothing about somebody out in the army. Eh, what's up, what was they in the army? They believe God and they, and they get killed. Do you know who God is? If God wants you alive, a bullet can go through you. I have witnessed, and maybe if I ask the question tonight, how many young men have been shot seven to eight times? Somebody will stand up right now and they still live in and been shot seven times eight times got a relative been shot many times still living because if God has a plan for your life there is no bullet there is no bazooka there is nothing in any situation that'll kill you so now we're going for a walk we're going for a little walk now and now I want you to take Matthew we did Matthew 28 now I want you to take Acts chapter 2 and I want you to walk with me as we journey Acts chapter 2 and Romans chapter 10. Last week, or was it last, was it last, no, I was in Jamaica last week, the week before, we talked about the association or the relationship with Romans 10 and Deuteronomy. And many saints didn't know that there was a relationship between Deuteronomy 30 and 12 and Romans 10 and 5. For Moses described 5, the righteousness which is of the law, that a man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart, that is not new. That's a quote from Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 12. Say not in thine heart who shall ascend in heaven that is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart that is the word of, of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, notice now verse 9 and 10. He switched it. In 9 he said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart. Now, there's absolutely no way 
for you to confess with your mouth if you don't believe in your heart. Amen. Now you might not love her, but if you believe you do, you going to tell her. You ain't telling her you love her and then believe. Amen. Uh, you might not love him, but if you believe you do, you're going to tell him. You're going to try to tell him. Out of the abundance of the heart, the scripture says, the mouth speaketh. For the person who is true, because there can be a misrepresentation of your heart and your mouth. And we call that lying. Amen. Because if there is a certain disposition you have in your heart and you speak not out of your heart but out of your willingness to deceive we call that lying. Hey, for instance, you know my, my step-grandfather was just uh, uh, he was in what we'd call in today's time, we'd call it abusive. He, he believed in, in, oh Jesus, have mercy. Uh, just give me 10 minutes. Uh, I, it's after nine, but I got here at nine, so. <laughs> and he, I mean, he was a man who was believed in whipping. I had a friend across the, my fence bordered on his fence and he was Seventh-day Adventist, and of course, we were apostolic Pentecostals, and, and we'd go over, I'd go over to his place and play, uh, play chess, or play pool, or play, no, no pool, pool was a sin. Uh, we'd play Scrabble. And my step-grandfather, my curfew was nine o'clock, which is, I'm past it now, and What he would do is he would sleep in my bed. <laughs> so that when I came home, whatever time I woke him up, that's when I came home. So what I would do is I would back my watch up. And I'd come home and say, Mass P, wake up, wake up, wake up, it's time for me to sleep. He'd look at his watch, he'd say, it's 12 o'clock, where have you been? And I said, oh, my watch is saying 8.30. <laughs> Lying. Whenever your heart and your mouth don't say the same thing. You're lying. But you can't lie to God. So the heart has to respond before the mouth comes open. Hear me when I tell you. If you believe it in your heart, it's the inner sleeve. And the expression of your mouth is the outer sleeve. But it's the sleeve. Because the mouth is not saying what the heart does not believe. When it comes to God. I believe you. So I open my mouth. So belief is to righteousness. Confession is made to salvation. Let's walk through the steps. Let's take Romans chapter 10 and let's put them in Acts chapter 13. I have an envelope here that nobody took because there's no money in it. <laughs> so I'll have to give it later. Now, 
let's go through this real carefully. And then I'm through. Nine says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Take that, hold that in your mind. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. In Romans chapter 10, you read somewhere that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Did I, did I read that right? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. All right. I'm in the right place now. Peter is preaching at verse 32 this Jesus hath God raised from the dead whereof we all are witnesses therefore being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear and David is not ascended unto the heavens but saith unto himself the Lord said unto my Lord sit thou on my right hand until I make thee thy foes thy footstool therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified Lord and Christ faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Peter preached the gospel. The next verse says, Now when they heard this, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Now when they heard, we got the first step. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Now when they heard this, they didn't have any clue until they heard. There was no action to be taken when they didn't hear. There is no belief unless you hear. Because faith only comes by hearing. Because you can't see God. Amen. Notice why you can't see him. Because he's saying you can't bring him down or bring him up. The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth. 